Doug Lip. Day after day, and it's like they're coming in droves asking you the most ridiculous questions, and the park has 50,000 people in it, and it's hot, and it's muggy, and it's really, really nasty outside. The last thing I want to do is tell somebody where Fantasyland is for the 10th time in the last 10 seconds. So I went to my boss and I said, I'm going nuts around here. And he says, it's your attitude, pal. And after I blew a gasket, he said, no, you got to think about this. Numbers one and two, be other centered and put yourself in their shoes. How many of these customers, how many of these guests have come from foreign countries or from other states that have fewer stoplights in the whole country than we have in a five mile radius of this park? He said, I, I want you to think about the transaction is they give us money and we give them a ticket. I said, okay, I'm with you. And he said, but before we let them in the park, we asked them to open up their head and take out the brain and put it in a locker. Does that make it easier for you? He says, think about this poor mom and dad that are coming in. They don't know what's going on. Their kids have been ballistic for the past 15 hours on the drive. Their conditioning broke down, and you expect them to know where Tomorrowland is, and their kids are dragging them all over the place? No, they're not going to know that. So I said, okay, fine, I'll try to do that. So I go back out and I'm sweeping. I've got my long handle bucket in one hand, my long handle broom in the other. I'm sweeping. And I'm thinking, okay, the poor people have come from all over the country, all over the land. And before 15, 20 seconds goes by, I'm thinking, people are pigs, people are pigs, people are pigs. Because there's garbage everywhere. There isn't garbage in the garbage receptacle. No, it's all around it. There's garbage in the trees. And if you go in the restroom, that's another story entirely. I was convinced that people were out in the, in the parking lot in groups of like 15 or 20 saying, okay, you guys have the first shift. You're going to go to Tomorrowland. You're going to trash it. Ready? Go. Okay, you guys, you're going to go to the Pirates of the Caribbean and you're going to get sick on the boat. Ready? Go. And we sweepers had to clean all that stuff up and be smiling and nice to all the people that asked us ridiculous questions. Doug Lip, the art of exceptional customer service and leadership. Service and leadership are the same thing. Great organizations that have great service in a consistent manner are always manned by people, populated by people that are good leaders, whether it's leaders of other people or they just have a good attitude about their own jobs. Art versus science. The art of customer service is the interpersonal side. It's that feeling that's, that somebody gets when they walk in the store. It's how long they have to wait before they're helped. And according to the data that David shared, the dress bar and organization, the perception is, I don't have to wait when I walk in here. Whereas in some places, it's like, hello, can I spend some money here? Right? So the art of customer service versus the science, and the science is the tangible, technical stuff. Doug Lip, the art of exceptional customer service and leadership. I was working with some heart surgeons about three years ago. They were part of a clinic that belonged to an HMO. They were all part of this whole package. They were losing business. And the reason was this, they had rotten service. They maintained their skill sets as surgeons. They could split a chest, they could fix the valves, but they were nasty to the patients or to the patient's families. We're the best, don't talk to anybody else. If you don't like it, tough. Well, the competition came along and competition always decides how high the bar is going to be. And the competition had equally qualified, skilled surgeons who had good bedside manner. And they had staff members and front office people that could help these patients or the patient's families wind their way through the maze of insurance claims or whatever the case might be. So again, it's both have to be in place. Doug Lip, the art of exceptional customer service and leadership. Doug's long career at both Disneyland and Walt Disney Studios provides countless insights that he shares with audiences all over the world. Doug was fast-tracked into management after extensive training in all aspects of theme park operations. During his years at Disney, Doug found that even strong organizations like Disney must embrace change and be willing to innovate. So at the park level, we had this arrogance, and at the headquarters, we had another kind of arrogance. It was, we know how to create family entertainment, so don't you, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, even try to tell us what you need. The voice of the customer doesn't exist. We tell you what you need. So as a result, we had some very trying times. Let me take a poll here. How many of you in your lives have ever seen, whether it's in the theaters or in video form, Star Wars? Raise your hands, please. Most everybody in the room. How about Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones, some of those flicks? Great, most everybody in the room. Unfortunately, those were not Disney movies. About the same time those movies were in their heyday, we produced such blockbusters as, and I'm gonna find out who the real losers are in this room. <laughs> Anybody ever see The Black Hole? <laughs> all right, now this is the other test. Did you also see Tron? 
kids. So I, thank you for your service. So I, you, you provided me gainful employment many years ago. I don't know what it is, but usually the same people that saw Black Hole saw Tron. Now, you notice the lack of hands that went up? Well, that's just a small indication of what happened throughout the country, is those were box office bombs. Didn't matter. We had our recipe. We had our procedures. We weren't going to go any, any great length to change those because we're Disney. So then we had this other person come along, and I think we reached the pinnacle of our arrogance when this producer came along with an idea for a film, and we kept making this person jump through all these hoops. This is our policy. This is our procedure. We don't care about your voice. I'm only listening to my voice. We're going to change your script. We're going to take your name off of it because that's the Disney way. And after about six months of going back and forth, Steven Spielberg got fed up with our approach, went to Universal Studios and created E.T., the extraterrestrial, mildly successful flick. <laughs> Anybody ever see that one? Yeah, okay. And again, our answer was the smash hit, Baby. You didn't see that, did you? Good. <laughs> so what we said was, let's not create any new stuff. We'll just keep recreating the old things. Anybody ever see Herbie the Love Bug? Come on, come on. You know, mm, I know you saw it. <laughs> now, nothing wrong with Herbie, but when it's Herbie the Love Bug goes to Monte Carlo, Herbie the Love Bug goes bananas, Herbie the Love Bug volume 65, and you got Dean Jones and Suzanne Plachette kind of chasing Herbie, saying, Herbie, wait, Herbie, Herbie getting kind of long in the tooth, right? We weren't willing to break the mold to take a risk because no one was truly empowered. I remember sitting in meetings where people would sit around saying, what would Walt do? What would Walt say? What would Walt think? And nobody ever said, Walt's not with us anymore. <laughs> the family unit of the 1950s and the 60s has changed. Wake up. But no, no, no. The mantra, Walt, what would Walt think, almost killed us. When you have a name like Marriott, when you have a name like Disney, there is tremendous history that you should be proud of, but don't hang out there. Use that as a foundation or as a substrate upon which to build your current and future business. Doug Lip, the art of exceptional customer service and leadership. As head of training at the world-renowned Disney University, Doug taught the importance of consistency and service in the popular traditions orientation. Consistency is probably one of the things that set Disney apart from other organizations is everybody had to be on stage looking right. Your environment and your clothing, everything had to be just right. Not that the standards are fine for every other organization, but something as simple as grooming. Back in the 70s when guys had long hair, we had standards that were really unusual. It was more like the military. Guys could not have mutton chops below their earlobes. Your hair couldn't touch your ears and it couldn't touch your collar. Women could not wear earrings larger than a quarter of an inch in diameter, could not have eyeliner on, had to have makeup that was natural tone to your skin. It went on and on and on and on and on.